Yeah, so here we're showing a demonstration about HDR content. Um, and we wanted to show, um, give, give people a sense of how HDR content works. And so in this demonstration, we have a, a Vizio P Quantum again on top and a 2018 OLED on the bottom. And we're showing content that really takes full advantage of all of the capabilities of high dynamic range. So this content um, has peak values that run all the way up to 10,000 nits, um, which is what the HDR standard allows, and it's full BT2020 color gamut. And so you, you can really see um, the value of the extra luminance that the, the quantum.tv has. So the Vizio P Quantum peaks uh, at 2,400 nits, the OLED TV is something like seven or 800 nits peak luminance. How much do you say the nits the peak? 2,400. That's, that's pretty high. It's that's, pretty high. Is that their, their highest uh, uh, spec TV? It was for 2018 and for 2019 they just announced that they'll have a 2,900 nit uh, peak luminance for one of their TVs. It's pretty awesome to get that much nits. Yeah. And this is just 700. Yep, seven, eight hundred, depending on how small you make the patch, can go a little higher even. So uh, right now, the I mean, I don't know if that's unfair or not, but the, the people have uh, windows, right? So normally people don't close the shades just to watch TV. So you have that's an right. advantage right there, right? With well, yeah, I mean, we live in California, so we watch football games at 10 in the morning, and the shades are open, it's pretty bright. But, you know, the quantum.tv looks great in, in any lighting environment. I think that's a big part of what we're saying here. Um, this is a really great scene to look at. So you see the sun here is, um, you can see it, right? And the OLED set, it's actually missing. And so what's going on here, right? In this scene, this looks like sunrise, the day's starting, you know, it's gonna be a beautiful day maybe. Over here, sunset, the storm is rising. In terms of a, for a movie or a piece of content, it's a very different meaning. And so one of the pieces of feedback we get when we do these kind of shootout demos is like, well, yeah, sure, but you know, what did the what did the the director intend? What did what did the content producer intend? Why does the sky look a little bit bluish down there? The sky looks a little bit bluish. I don't I know guess if it so. looks bluish or not. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the, the colors are better on on the quantum dot. Well, the colors are better, but this scene actually, and we have this really great tool here from AJA Video Systems, and this is analyzing every pixel, actually, of the content in real time. And you can see from the color gamut chart here that it is wide gamut content. Actually, it actually falls a little bit outside P3 and the yellow for the sun, right? And, uh, but mostly the content is within the next level nine. The real thing here is the luminance. So this frame, this um, uh, frame of content has a peak luminance of 9,788 nits. Oh. So that's almost all the way at the top of uh, the range that HDR can, uh, content can carry. You actually see it in the histogram here, this peak for the sun way up here at the top. That's the sun nice. down here. So eventually there'll be 10,000 nit uh, uh, displays and it'll be perfect for that? Yeah, we think so. And so that's actually outside the range of what the what the, uh, the the quantum dot TV can show too, but because it has a higher uh, luminance range, it doesn't have to tone map the sun down too much, right? It can actually show there's a difference here and here. Whereas with the lower peak luminance for the OLED, um, it needs to really tone map those 10,000 nit values way down into something it can show, and that's where you sort of lose some information there, and it totally changes the meaning of the scene. So. Um, that's pretty cool, and uh, it's not too uh, expensive, right, to buy a, a Vizio? Yeah, the, during the holiday season, these were available for thirteen ninety nine at Costco. That's amazing. It's a pretty good price. Sixty five. Sixty five. Sixty five inch. So we're talking half the price, or less than maybe a third. I don't know. Something like that. The old, this old particular OLED, I think we bought for around twenty seven hundred at about the same time. So yeah, half, close yeah. to half. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for making it more affordable to get this kind of cool displays. <laughs> that's our goal. You know, we really want to see quantum dots everywhere. And that's one of the things we're so excited about for all the news from the TV manufacturers at, at the show this year. You know, you saw Vizio adopt quantum dots now in their M series yep. lineup as well as their P series. Um, TCL is talking about bringing quantum dots to the North America market for the first time. Hisense, their H9, uh, they're going to have a 55 inch, I think they said, for $699. So those are great prices that people can really afford. So it's, wow. it's awesome to see. Six ninety nine, and what's the cheapest we can hope to get a sixty five inch quantum dot? 
I don't know. Because that's be, the one I'm be aiming for. To see. Yeah. Uh, so, but right now we had around thirteen hundred. Right now, I think this was one of the lowest ones. There might have been one product that was a little bit less. We have to double check though. Cool. Maybe they're announcing some that will be eventually more affordable. Yeah, I think so. I think that's one of the themes for this year yeah. is that you're actually seeing really mainstream adoption for the first time, not just staying in the premium segment, but actually going into the mainstream. And uh, what are you showing over there? So over here, uh, this is something I think you've seen before, but um, this is an example of our quantum dot on glass Q dog, we call it. Um, and I and uh, we've talked about this for a little bit, a little while. It's a really exciting technology. It uses a really thin piece of glass um, in, to replace the light guide in the TV. Typically, uh, or typically any display has a plastic light guide in an LCD display. You replace that with the glass, and the glass is really rigid. And so with a really rigid piece of glass as your light guide, you can remove some of the structural elements in the display and make a super thin display. And we coat the quantum dots actually right onto the glass. So we get rid of the film. We no longer need an extra piece of film. We can actually just coat the dots right onto the light guide plate. So from the user's perspective, the color is the same. The brightness is the same. The front of screen performance is, is the same great quantum dot, you know, kind of color and brightness you, you expect, but you have a really thin device. And so the first product was launched at the show this year, which is gonna be a 27 inch monitor. I think it's six and a half millimeters thick. So it's thinner than an iPhone and it's a 27 inch monitor with quantum dots. So it's really kind of a cool uh, new version of our technology. Nice, that's awesome. But I mean, when, when, when I see this, of course, thin, but this is also thin, but then stuff comes with it that you don't need anymore. Right, so this is, an, this is we're adding a layer to, to, the, uh, to the film, to, to the device, and in this case, we're re replacing something, so we can really make it thinner with the, with the Q-Dog. So it's a good chance in 2019 there'll be a whole bunch of uh, uh, Q-Dog I think so. You know, uh, we know there's a lot of interest, uh, but you know, we, we can't comment on the manufacturer's plans uh, until they uh, release those products in the market. So. But why is the first product a PC monitor, and why is it not a TV? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I think I think we, if you asked us initially, we thought maybe this would be a TV product. We actually saw a lot of pull from the monitor side, and that's because the thinness really matters for the monitor, right? TV. Um, is if you have a really thin TV, that's cool. I think that's really cool at the retail. You know, when you're going to buy it, you go, wow, this is thin. But then you hang it on your wall and you never think about it anymore. You can't yeah. tell it's thin, right? But the monitor, it's on your desk and it's really striking and thin and really beautiful. And you can maybe walk around it and you see it and you notice it. So I think that the monitor guys really felt like um, this was something special that, that they'd be able to market really well. And it's important to get more and more HDR for the monitor market, right? You want to have HDR great HDR and that, then that means quantum dot for uh, the PC, the PC market. Yeah, and we're seeing, laptops. yeah, we're seeing, you know, the gaming market, um, especially on the PC side. Um, we have a couple of monitors out there that have great HDR capabilities with quantum dots and um, yeah, it's awesome. And that's actually another place where the, the speed of the backlight really matters, right? So if you're gaming, you know, this, well, the content we were looking at over here was 30 frames per second. But for gamers, they want to push, you know, 140 plus frames per second. The faster you go, the more the speed of your backlight actually comes into play and really matters. And so you don't want to have a backlight that's actually leaving this red ghost trail behind uh, images on the screen with a but high frame rate. In, how, do, how does it affect the speed? What, so, what you're doing. I thought you were just a passive thing that happens right there, but how does the effect the speed of the backlight? Well, so it, as the content moves faster, right, so if, as you're updating the frames, the object is moving at a more fine resolution across the screen, and you're, and you're turning the LEDs on and off at a faster rate, and you can exacerbate the problem with the, uh, with the red phosphor ringing. And with the quantum dot, it's just faster to turn it Nanoseconds, on and off. Nanoseconds, billionths of a second. You know, way faster than your eye can see. Way faster. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And uh, there was also some uh, some other demos. Is it similar to what we saw at your headquarters? Yep. You've seen you've seen similar demos. This is actually an updated version of the uh, quantum dot inkjet printing. Um, this is what we call quantum dot color conversion or QDCC. Um, we think we'll see this uh, coming to market in the next couple of years in quantum dot on OLED. You see in the diagram here is a blue LED. It could be a blue OLED, it could be any blue light source. Um, and you have a clear blue pixel with scattering material that's letting the blue light through. And then uh, quantum dot green and quantum dot red. 
And so this is the latest version of it uh, with, with improved blue absorption. Um, and this is, this is an area that we're super excited about for the next couple of years. And so when I look into the loop, I can see a structure that is what? You're going to see individual pixels. The blue are clear, and the red and the green have actual quantum dot material in them. And that's what's making the red and the green. Uh, the resolution we're showing here is uh, sub-pixels that are 280 by 80 microns. That's equivalent to 4K on uh, about a 50-inch TV. And uh, uh, inkjet printed? Yeah. What does that mean? That well, it's literally like an inkjet printer, right? And so um, instead of using a photolithography process where you put all the material down and then you etch off what you don't need, you actually just drop the the material right into the subpixel. So you only use the material you need. So it's a great way to reduce the cost of display making. So that's going to help for more affordable quantum dot solutions. Yeah, it's going to it's going to enable actually this quantum dot on OLED. Um, uh, type of device. So why is this only for OLED like this? Because you need to inject it right onto the each OLED. You could. You can also do it with a micro LED um, a light source. We think that's another area that's really exciting. And, and eventually, I think you can do it for LCD also. Anything that you know has a, a color filter or a, a light source, you can use a quantum dot color conversion for. So does that mean? And it's because you have the factory, you do all the quantum dot stuff, right? Does yeah. that mean you, you, you're working on making printers that can just inkjet print all this stuff? So we're not making the printers, but actually this demonstration was made um, in collaboration with DIC, and DIC is a Japanese company that's uh, one of the largest electronics inks makers in the world, and they're helping us to optimize the quantum dots for all the different inkjet printers out there. So there's a few companies that make these really industrial scale inkjet printers, um, and we want to make sure our materials work really well with all the different print heads and all the different technologies that are being used to make displays. So there's printers involved in making displays? But the not today, are... actually not today. Um, this is a kind of a new area for display making. And so this is an area that the display industry is really excited about. For example, one of the coolest part when I go to uh, format the BOE booths, for example, yeah. they said they have printed OLED. Right. So it's just a machine that prints OLED and you're going to be part of that printer. Very similar. So a lot of the companies that are making the printers for that application are working on making the printers for, for Quantum Dot as well. So here we're showing something for the first time at CES, uh, a demo that shows that all white color gamut technologies are not created equal. Um, there's some important differences that we wanted to point out. So on the bottom here, we have a Vizio P-Series Quantum using Quantum Dot technology, uh, 2018 TV. And on top, we have a 2018 TV using another wide color gamut technology called KSF. KSF is a red emitting phosphor that goes inside the LED in, a, in an LED LCD. Um, and KSF enables you to achieve about 90% DCI-P3, so it's a you know a reasonably wide color gamut, not as wide as Quantum Dot. But there's an issue that we wanted to point out. We noticed some reviewers noted this uh, in the reviews of some of these TVs, but they weren't sure what it is. So we wanted to help uh, describe it for them. And what you see here is a slow response time from the KSF phosphor. So the KSF responds in milliseconds. And this really matters for a full array local dimming backlight. As you know, behind this TV, there are a number of LED zones. So as the ping pong ball is bouncing up and down, the LEDs are turning on and off following the ping pong ball. With the slow phosphor, the LED turns on, and the blue and the green turn on instantly, but the red ramps up slowly. And this means the, tr the leading edge of the ping pong ball has a cyan appearance to it. And as the LEDs turn off, the blue and the green, again, turn off almost instantly, but the red actually has a little tail to it. The red decays over milliseconds, and you can actually see this with your eye. I'm not sure if your camera's going to be able to pick I it I can up. see in the camera, I'm filming 60 frames per second, I can see at the tail of the ball, there's a little bit of reddish yeah. color. Yeah, there's that a what little red about, right? flash. Yeah, and your eye kind of integrates it together, but as you look at this, you kind of feel like something's wrong, and then you see this flash of red or flash of green. And so. Um, it's something that's kind of, once you see it, it's very hard to unsee, right? And down here, there's none of this problem? No, the quantum dots uh, turn on and off instantly. And that's why we have this chart here that shows the response time of the quantum dots. They respond really in nanoseconds. So when the blue LED turns on, the, quant the red and the green quantum dots respond just nanoseconds later. So effectively, instantly, they're on. When the ball passes away, the, um, uh, the LED turns off, the quantum dots turn off instantly. We see here, 
the blue and the green turn on instantly, and then the red sort of warms up, and then when the ball passes, again, the blue and the green go away, but the red... And you have wins. another video to illustrate uh, this in slow motion? Yeah, so on? we did a, um, a slow motion, uh, a high-speed camera capture of this, and you can really see the quantum dot is on the top, and then the KSF set is down here. And this, you can see that kind of, the LED, the, the soccer ball starts off cyan, turns to white, and then goes to is red. Is it blinking? And it's kind of blinking, yeah. Because of the high-speed camera speed or something? Oh, in this case, we used uh, black frame insertion mode. So both sets are using black frame insertion mode. And yeah. in this high-speed capture, that, that really helps to show off the effect.